Hi students, today we are going to study about the force between the plates of a capacitor. If there is a capacitor like this, what is the force on each plate because of the other plate? And what will happen to this force, you know, if you take the capacitor plates apart or you bring them closer? And what will happen to this force between the capacitor plates if you add a battery to the capacitor plates? And what will happen to this force if you insert a dielectric between the capacitor plates? That is what we are going to study in this chapter related to the force between capacitor plates. So shall we proceed? Do let's. First of all, let's calculate the force between capacitor plates when a battery is connected to the capacitor. We'll calculate this force in two situations, when a battery is connected and when a battery is not connected. That's because when a battery is connected to the capacitor plates, in that case the potential difference across the capacitor plates is constant. However, when a battery is not connected to the capacitor plates, the potential difference between the capacitor plates is not constant. In fact, the charge is constant, the charge on the capacitor plates. So how do we calculate this force on the capacitor plates? Let's consider this capacitor plate on the right, the one with the charge minus Q on it. Now if you consider only this capacitor plate, what is the force acting on it? Well, we had earlier learned that if there's any body which has a charge Q and if it is placed in an electric field E, in that case the net electric force acting on that body is Q into E, isn't it? In the case of a capacitor plate, you know, this capacitor plate on the right, the charge on the body is minus Q. What is the electric field in which this capacitor plate is placed? Clearly, the electric field will be because of the other capacitor plate and the electric field will be sigma by 2 epsilon naught. So we will not consider the electric field of this very own capacitor plate because generally we do not consider the electric field of the body the force on which we are trying to calculate. Understood? So we will not say you know that the net electric field is sigma by epsilon naught in between the two plates. We will only consider sigma by 2 epsilon naught the electric field because of the other capacitor plate. So the net force on this capacitor plate on the right will be minus Q into sigma by 2 epsilon naught, isn't it? The field of the other plate into the charge on this plate. Now clearly, sigma by 2 epsilon naught into minus Q is negative. This means that the force acts towards the left in the direction opposite to the direction of the electric field, isn't it? So you can say that the force on each capacitor plate is directed inwards and its magnitude is sigma by 2 epsilon naught into Q. Sigma by 2 epsilon naught into Q can also be written as Q squared by 2A epsilon naught because after all sigma is Q by A and when you simplify this expression you get Q squared by 2A epsilon naught. This is the magnitude of force on each capacitor plate because of the other capacitor plate and this force is directed inwards in between the capacitor plates. Understood? We can even calculate the force on the capacitor plate on the left for example because of the capacitor plate on the right. So if this is the capacitor plate on the left which has a charge plus Q, in that case the electric field will be towards the right, isn't it? Because the negatively charged plate will try to pull the positively charged plate towards itself, isn't it? So the electric field will be towards the right and it will be sigma by 2 epsilon naught. The charge on this capacitor plate is plus Q. So the force on this capacitor plate will also be sigma by 2 epsilon naught into plus Q. That is Q square by 2 epsilon naught inwards, isn't it? Now since a battery is connected to these two capacitor plates, the net potential difference across the capacitor plates will be constant. So we can calculate, you know, this force that we just calculated, the force on each capacitor plate. We can calculate that force in terms of the potential difference across the capacitor plates. That is because, you know, when we say Q square by 2A epsilon naught, now Q is not constant, Q keeps changing, isn't it? But V is constant. The potential difference across the capacitor plates is always constant when a battery is connected. So we'll convert this force and express it in terms of V. The force is Q square by 2A epsilon naught, but Q is CV. Isn't it? Where C is the capacitance of the capacitor. C can be replaced by epsilon naught A by X, where X is the distance between the two capacitor plates. 
and that gives us the value of force between the capacitor plates in terms of the potential difference across the capacitor. This force is half epsilon naught AV square by 2x square. Note the interesting fact that x here is the distance between the plates and the force is inversely proportional to x square. Isn't that interesting? What this tells us is that as you keep on increasing the distance between the capacitor plates, the value of the electric force on each capacitor plate decreases. Fascinating, isn't it? But this is true, as you can make out from this expression. By the way, you must remember this expression because it will help you solve objective type questions. And you know, if you can't remember this expression, make sure you do remember that when a battery is connected to a parallel plate capacitor, the net electric force on each of the plates is always proportional to 1 by x square, where x is the distance between the capacitor plates. What happens when a battery is not connected? In that case too, the force is still q square by 2a epsilon naught. After all, when we calculated the electric force between the two plates, we didn't consider the battery in the first place. You know, we just took our plate like this and if this charge was plus Q, we said that the electric field here was sigma by 2 epsilon naught and we simply said that the net force on this plate is Q into sigma by 2 epsilon naught, which is the same as Q square by 2 epsilon naught. So we didn't involve the battery here. We involved the battery, you know, when we wanted to convert this charge and express it in terms of potential difference. So the net force on each of these capacitor plates is still Q square by 2A epsilon naught inwards. The only difference here is that the charge on the capacitor plates is constant when no battery is connected to the capacitor. What that means is that since Q is constant, the net force is also constant. The net force, you know, on each capacitor plate because of the other capacitor plate is Q square by 2 epsilon naught, which is constant. So you can move the capacitor plates further apart. You can move the capacitor plates towards each other, but the net force on each capacitor plate will not change if no battery is connected to the capacitor plates. Understood? Again, this fact is very important and you must remember it. Let's now move on to the next concept. The next concept we're going to talk about is the concept of dielectrics. Now, what exactly are dielectrics? Have we heard of this term before? Well, long ago when we were studying about the concept of electric field, yes, we had learned about the concept of dielectrics. Dielectrics basically refer to substances which become polarized when an electric field is applied through them. So let me explain to you what a dielectric basically is. Consider this electric field E, which is constant and uniform, like this. When you place a dielectric in the path of this electric field, you know, like this. What happens is, since the electric field is basically directed towards the right, this point here has a higher potential and this point here has a lesser potential, isn't it? So if this is the dielectric here, then this point has a higher potential and this point has a lower potential because the electric field always moves from high potential to low potential, isn't it? Now, because of the higher potential here and the lower potential here, the electrons inside the dielectric, they get attracted towards the positive potential and they accumulate at the surface like this. All these are electrons. And similarly, you know, the positive charges accumulate here at the surface, which is at a lower potential. This happens in the case of a dielectric and when this happens, a reverse electric field is created inside a dielectric like this because of the segregation of positive and negative charges. So basically you can say that E is E external and this extra electric field that is created inside the dielectric which opposes the normal electric field is called E polarization. And therefore, the net electric field inside a dielectric is E external minus E polarization. Understood? 
That's because E external is the electric field that's present everywhere in space and E polarization is the negatively directed electric field that's produced inside the dielectric. So the net electric field inside the dielectric is the electric field outside the dielectric minus the extra polarization electric field that has been created inside the dielectric. You know this segregation of charges, this separation of charges, electrons moving towards the positive end, positive charges moving towards the negative end, this is called polarization inside the dielectric. Understood? I know this might sound a bit heavy but we've already discussed this concept in detail when we studied about dielectrics in our chapter related to electric field. You can watch that part of that video again and you will understand exactly what I'm saying here. So dielectrics are basically used to increase the capacitance of capacitors. How do dielectrics increase the capacitance? You see, in ordinary circumstances, if there was vacuum in between these two paddle plates, then the capacitance of these two plates would be epsilon naught A by D. There's no doubt about it. Now, if you place a dielectric of dielectric constant K in between these two plates, then the capacitance of this capacitor becomes K times epsilon naught A by D. Now, that is a fascinating phenomenon, but it is true. This is what happens. You must remember this property of every dielectric. You must remember this concept. 